and service charges, there is an amendment to the recommendation in this paragraph that has been circulated in the Chamber. Can I ask that Councillor McGuinney uh, to move and Councillor Hogg to second this amendment? I, yes, um, Madam Mayor, I move, but I'd also like to speak to the amendment as well. Second it. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the amendment which you have in front of you is um, very clear. Um, but the recent Welfare and Reform Bill, which is being forced on the Council, does actually nothing to address the, major the needs of the majority of Wandsworth residents. And there are two things I'd like to talk about what, which are missed out of the, the bill. Um, it does not address the lack of affordable housing that the majority of residents have had to deal with or protect residents from rogue landlords. The question of what is affordable housing is a major concern for residents. Um, I have been asking this question over and over again, and I have had varied answers um, from officers in the Housing and Regeneration OSE, and I've had an explanation that the, um, it is 20% of the going rate for housing in Wandsworth. The going rate of housing in, or 20% off the going rate of housing in Wandsworth is certainly not affordable for me. If I were to buy affordable housing in Wandsworth, I would not have enough to live on. The definition of, a, of affordable housing, I would say, should be 30% of a person's annual income, which will give that person some money to live a life with. Um, on the 24th of January, I'm now going into magazines as well, um, Eva Wiseman was writing for the Observer magazine, and she quotes some quite horrific statistics from Shelter. Shelter are processing 1,200 calls a day as house prices rise and social housing dies as 53% of renters are having trouble paying their landlords for homes that are often, if not of those slums of the 1966 in the poor condition, they are still having to fight for them. Over the past five years, the number of homeless people in temporary accommodation has risen by 26%. The number of families living in bed and breakfast has doubled. And she goes on to quote, and this is where I get my affordable housing from, she goes on to quote a Tory MP, who I won't name, <laughs> who stated that 250000 for a starter home was extremely affordable. Uh, well, I, I, I like to disagree with that. Um, Eva, Wiseman also, Eva Wiseman also goes on to say how Shelter have estimated that by 2020, in order to buy a starter home, it's self-paid for by cutting the provision of social housing, in London, you will need to earn around £77,000 a year, having first saved £98,000 for a deposit. Um, the bill also does nothing to help Wandsworth residents living in accommodation exploited by rogue landlords. We have campaigned as a group to have these rogue landlords licensed and the latest paper that came with the latest round of the paper we're discussing, which is paper 1616, is a report by the Director of Public Health on a petition requesting that the Council improves conditions for renters. Yay, good. And make sure it takes action on rogue landlords. Good. However, I would like to suggest it still doesn't go far enough because the paper quotes 728 tenant complaints against the 41,000-odd living in private sector properties. The council cannot be sure that this tiny figure is the exact figure as many tenants are too scared, as I have said before, to complain in case they get evicted. And we know from our housing OSC and regeneration OSC that the council itself recognises that the biggest cause for eviction is from the private rental sector. So I would say that this figure of 728 is very small. Um, it also goes on to talk about the um, licensing. We want to talk about the licensing of the road landlords. And what I would like to put in this paper is that Wandsworth Council, and I believe they are from the last Housing and Regeneration OSC, are beginning to talk to Wandsworth voluntary sector. But I'd make, like to make this paragraph official in the paper and say that they do liaise with the voluntary sector to find out about the complaints they receive on a daily basis and match the figures to the figure they have of 728 and somehow make this official. Um, another paragraph within the paper should be that the multiple occupation, those that do Ma not take Madame up Mayor, the offer... Um, is that, uh, this would be a point of order. I don't know which point of order it is, but I think Councillor 
McKinney may actually be speaking to a, a different paper uh, to the one that we are voting on this evening. We're voting on 16.9, not Yes, 16, I'm trying 16. to say what it hasn't actually included because I've looked through it. Beg your and part. I would like to say it if, should if have included more. If that's acceptable to you, Madam Mayor, then I withdraw that. So, can I continue? Um, shelter have, are processing 1,200 calls a day um, as house, price ri house prices rise. And this is that figure a day puts into, um, really makes the 728 seem much too small. So I would like to say, please, could Wandsworth Council start talking to Wandsworth voluntary sector and actually identifying these road landlords and um, licensing them and making sure they know exactly who they are. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Our, uh, our housing strategy is the cornerstone of our aspiration agenda. A, a decent home is the means by which we give our residents security, stability, and strength to build better lives for themselves. There are 6,000 homes currently being built in Wandsworth, and like those 6,000 homes, our housing strategy, our housing ambition, needs firm foundations. And those foundations come in the form of prudent financial management. We're not a property company, as Councillor Hogg is fond of saying. We're not a property company, we're a people company. But like any company, our heart must be supported by a prudent head. The Labour amendment tonight is imprudent. It gives our people company a headache. It undermines our foundations by removing our ability to maximise our income. Don't forget, Labour tonight are quibbling over clauses that would allow us to take action on arrears and vacant properties at the same time as we propose a 1% rent decrease for our tenants, which, as we heard earlier, the Labour councillors failed to support last week yet again. Like many of us, um, I read Tony Travers's book over Christmas on the history of London councils. And reflecting on many of the often Labour mistakes of the last 50 years in housing policy in London, it really reinforced my belief that we need to take bold decisions to regenerate our estates and build mixed tenure, aspirational neighbourhoods. The paper that we're voting on tonight um, Comment, uh, it commits an, an, additional, an additional £47 million to estate regeneration in the next two years. It commits us to spend whatever it takes to maintain decent home standard in all of Wandsworth's properties. It commits us to turbocharge the housing purchase grant and use that to tackle the London-wide homelessness situation. We can't do this if we don't manage our housing stock prudently. This year, we've realised £17 million by selling garages and unused land. And by doing things like this, we're making sure that our land is managed as efficiently as possible to provide as many decent homes as possible for our residents. We're spending £100 million extra in this paper on capital projects. So let's put an end tonight to the myth peddled every housing committee by the Labour Party that we have millions sitting idle in our housing revenue account. It's simply not true. Those millions are what will pay for our huge estate regeneration programs that are winning national acclaim, have won London, London Housing Zone status, and which most importantly are infusing the residents of Councillor Hogg's own ward. So let's not splurge today and let down our residents tomorrow. Let's reject this amendment and vote for the prudent financial management which underpins aspiration through housing in Wandsworth. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we have heard a lot this evening about the importance of sound financial management and the role that it plays uh, for Wandsworth Council to achieve its objectives. It allows us to keep council tax low, which is a policy that makes the council so distinctive and popular with its residents. 
In the context of housing, sound financial management allows the council to continue to improve and regenerate its estates. This is not just the major redevelopments of Wynn Stanley, York Road and Alton Estates, for example, but also the significant capital improvements taking place in estates across the borough, such as the new windows on the Aboyne Estate uh, in my ward, uh, to name just one. It has allowed the council to, allow, uh, to add around £102 million to the capital programme. As uh, the leader confirmed, this is uh, uh, the largest, depending on how you look at the figures, uh, capital injection by the council. Uh, this is important as the ma money will significantly improve tenants' homes as well as the estates in which they are located. It will provide, uh, also provide us with uh, much needed extra social housing. Uh, this was not supported by the opposition councillors in the OAC last week. More broadly, Sound financial management has allowed Wandsworth to weather the storm of the financial crisis. The Council has been able to bear the necessary cuts Her Majesty's Government has been making in an effort to rebalance its books after the overspending of the last government. Uh, an example before us this evening is the 1% rent reduction for Council houses as a result of the Welfare Reform and Work Bill. Now, we had made other plans for setting the rent in this borough, but as the papers before the Council tonight show, we have been able to modify our plans in order to deal with this reduction and continue to maintain a, health, a healthy housing revenue account, all thanks to sound financial management. And let's be clear, reducing rents is good for our working tenants. They will be paying less in rent and at the same time, wages are rising faster than at any time since the financial crisis. Uh, I'm not sure what the party opposite's position is on this because first time of asking they uh, voted against it. They abstained last week, I think, and I can only assume from the amendment that they're supporting it tonight. Uh, but although I don't understand deleting paragraph H, which is no serving notice of the tenants of the reduction, so they don't want to tell them about the uh, reduction. It seems strange. Uh, it is in the interest of sound financial management that changes have been agreed to the way in which service charges are calculated. Thanks to this, Wandsworth can continue to provide these services and yet restrict charge increases to less than 1% above CPI. Again, th this wasn't opposed by the councillors opposite uh, last week. Um, and Councillor Hogg talks about uh, a package that w was being voted on. I distinctly remember that uh, the chairman of the OSC gave the opportunity for you to devote on separate items, which you didn't take. So um, I, I can only assume that you were just not able to decide. Um, to those who regret any extra cost to individuals for these services, uh, I would point out that they will not pay more than the actual cost to the council, and that is surely fair. Uh, it is also a good deal for tenants, because Wandsworth is very good at keeping costs down. For example, look at the heating and hot water paper the Housing and Regeneration OSC received last week. This sets out the great deal the council has secured for tenants and leaseholders with communal heating and water systems. Wherever there are savings to be made, Wandsworth Council will try to make them. Uh, the council is only able to make improvements it is making and to run schemes such as the assistance to first-time buyers it is offering because of its commitment to sound financial planning. Long may this commitment continue. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's been a, an interesting uh, debate on, on this subject, and I apologise to, to Councillor McKinney if I sort of kept her off as stride, but I was perhaps a little concerned that we may have been discussing the wrong paper, but I'm more than happy, Madam Mayor, to accept your ruling that that, that was in order. So uh, I apologise if I, if I caused uh, uh, any uh, distress to Councillor McKinney. Um, she certainly, of course, uh, made some very good points in her uh, very reasoned and very measured way, uh, as she always does. And, and, and we always listen, I think, with uh, great respect to what Councillor McKinney uh, has to say, because she uh, doesn't uh, fall into the trap of uh, being unnecessarily partisan uh, when there's actually no need to be. Um, some of the points that were made by uh, colleagues on, on my own side, I think, were indeed very valid. Uh, we cannot reiterate enough uh, uh, how good, much good news, I suspect, it will be uh, for our working tenants uh, that uh, their uh, rents are going to be reduced. Uh, as Councillor Lescott reminded us, uh, not only did the Labour Party vote against that twice, 
before, but at the last meeting they decided to abstain. Don't know quite what had caused that change of heart. Who knows what they will do this evening? Uh, we, we've no idea. He speculates they may vote for it. Uh, I don't know. He was also, uh, Councillor Lescott was also quite correct in saying that the chairman uh, did actually offer the opposition the option of voting on all of the, I think it was 12 uh, recommendations, uh, and they could certainly have put forward these amendments then. There was no sign of them coming then. Sorry, they seem Madam to have Mayor, will, emerged between. Will the speaker take an intervention? Uh, I'd be more than happy. We always, always love hearing from Councillor Hogg. Well, no, I, I, sorry, I'll, I'll just end this um, faintly tedious speculation on the reason why uh, we abstained in order to discuss the issue further with group and if he'll end his speech now we'll move to the vote and we can all be put out of our suspense about how the Labour group are going to um, Well that's even more revealing isn't it? So they didn't actually know what their opinion was so they thought it was probably best not to have an opinion at all so extra hundred million pound for a reinvestment? Well we don't really know is that a good idea? Is it better? We've got to wait for our group meeting we haven't had that yet so what we better do we better abstain How very uh, honest of Councillor Hogg to say that I, I, I've never heard anything quite so honest. Thank you very much indeed. We look forward to more revelations from the Labour group uh, as, to, as to that. Um, presumably, there must have been disagreement uh, among uh, their members about them voting against the rent, the decrease in rents. Couldn't, so maybe they didn't know whether they were for it or against it. So tell you what, we won't have an opinion. It, it, it really is unbelievable. So thank you for that very helpful intervention, Councillor Hogg. Uh, do come back to us uh, if you have anything else. If you've got anything else that you'd like to tell us, you provide such an easy target. Uh, our rent policy uh, is uh, what uh, we have always proposed, and that is, as Councillor Sweet uh, has reminded us, of running a very competently run housing department. We provide excellent services to our tenants and leaseholders, which is reflected year on year in our satisfaction ratings. Um, John Healy, not John McDonald, uh, was very complimentary to me uh, when I met him uh, in my capacity as chairman of Arch uh, about what Wandsworth is doing, uh, as indeed is uh, Lord Best, uh, who I met, one of the crossbench uh, leading peers on uh, housing, who I met this morning uh, on behalf of Arch to uh, discuss uh, amendments he may wish to put forward uh, on behalf of the stock retained sector. Both uh, very complimentary about Wandsworth, uh, the only ones who aren't uh, sitting over there. The, none of this has been achieved by accident, Madam Mayor. It's been achieved by years and years and years of sound management. Uh -huh. Sorry, are you, are you going to? Did you want to? Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. Just private check. Thank you very much indeed. It's so, so, so kind of you to, uh, to indulge me. Um, and I certainly pay tribute to uh, all my predecessors for the work that some of whom are still in the chamber and, and others have now gone, uh, for all the work that they've done in ensuring that the housing revenue account is in the uh, state that it's in at the moment, uh, where we can deliver all these services. And even with a 1% rent cut, we can still deliver massive regeneration uh, to two of our most deprived areas, and we will turn them into areas that our citizens who live there, and indeed all of us, can be eminently proud of. This uh, is extraordinarily good news, this paper for residents. I urge uh, people to, I would hope the opposition would withdraw their amendment, actually, but it's probably too much to hope for. Um, we should certainly reject the amendment and support this paper. As one of Councillor Ellis's predecessors, can I thank him for his congratulations? <laughs> I'm more you may. To extend. Now, the matter before the. Are we settling? The matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor McGuinney and seconded by Councillor Hogg to, recommend, uh, to the recommendation, paragraph one of the item's decision report concerning housing rents and service charges. Please show with an indication of hands those for the amendment. And those against?
The amendment is lost, 1632. And where are we here? So we go to the recommendation in paragraph one. If we now go to the recommendation in paragraph one. Uh, Madam Mayor, could I ask that you go through the recommendations uh, paragraph by paragraph, please? We will vote differently. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Go through the part, the different parts of the recommendation. And a show of hand after each recommendation. Yes. Okay, <coughs> recommendation A. Agreed? Recommendation B. Recommend, recommendation B. Agreed. Recommendation C. Agreed. Recommendation... Uh, so we're going to vote on C then. Those, those in favour of C. Those in favour of C. Do you want to remind everyone what C is? Would you like remind? No, clearly not. No, okay. <laughs> those in favour? <laughs> <laughs> And those against? <coughs> and those abstaining? So that the, that is carried. the item is carried 32 14, 14, 14 two, two with two abstentions. abstentions. Recommendation, D. recommendation D and recommendation E. Recommendation oh, F. Oh, gosh. Recommendation F. G. G. H. Same numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think same numbers. Okay. You're voting against this one. H. Okay. We, well, we need to vote then. Okay. Those in favour? Those against? Okay, 16. 16, yeah. So that's, that uh, the items carried 32-16. What was that, H? Yeah. Uh, recommendation I? Recommendation J? Recommendation K? I? L. L. <laughs> against. Can we do that on the same numbers? Same numbers? Yes, that's a bit... <laughs> I can't, can't hear. Okay. <laughs> Same as last row. Um, uh, item, uh, item L is carried. And finally, M. On the same numbers. On the same numbers? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 